Welcome to part 11 of my Tava Black Widow mod series. I normally upload a new video about in this series every other week because this is a bi-weekly series but I I've done enough progress since the last video to justify a new ep part in the series so I decided to upload it a week early. So I'm just going to start this video by doing an unboxing of my the new TMC2130 stepper motor drivers that I received and then move on to other things so if we open the box as you can see I have my TMC2130 drivers here and I also have something else underneath I'll just show that in a second they've also sent me a plastic screwdriver which is nice for dealing with the the pots on these types of drivers Though I, you don't really need that for TMC 2A130s, which is basically the biggest advantage of TMC 2A130s, you can calibrate them through software, but that will be coming in a later video, stay tuned for that. So here they are, TMC 2A130s version uh, 1.0. They are from the same company that I bought the TMC 2100s from, at least the same brand, not the same company. I also have these driver protectors underneath those as well, so let me just quickly show you that. As you can see, it just goes in between the main board and the drivers themselves. This is basically what they contain, there isn't much going on, but it is useful maybe i don't know the only reason that i purchased this is because well five tmc 2130s cost fifty dollars well five tmc 2130s plus this only cost me about i don't know 34 or 36 or something like that dollars so somehow through, through some mistake these were cheaper that's the only reason that i got those and i'm not sure if i'm actually going to use them as for the tmc 2130s well, I'm going to use them, but that will be, com be coming in a later video because I want to do the control box first and then I'm going to start work on those, but there's also some soldering that I need to do. I'm not sure if I'll do that in this video or some some time else, but we'll see. And if, if you, even if I do the soldering in this video, as I said, I'm not going to be able to use them until I am done with the control box. I don't want to do it in this current control box because it is very hard to swap components in it so yeah it will be better if I just wait and it shouldn't take too long to be done with the control box so yeah it will probably take a few videos I've also done some tinkering with the settings of the 3D printer to fix the print quality of the extruder and I've done some significant progress so I'll again just print a 3D bench and a control V torture test and then give you my comparisons and this time they actually look pretty decent. Let's look at the 3D Banshee print. As you can see, it looks really good. There isn't much of anything bad going on. There's a little bit of lines, but it's much better than the older print. Here, there's some these. I don't know what would cause these, but there's some lines here that aren't usual. But whatever, it's still way better than it used to be. There is a little bit of an infill issue as you can see here, but that's something that can be fixed very easily. It's just I had to I have to increase the perimeter overlap in simplified 3D and that's about it. There is a little bit of lining going on here, but it's not significant. 
And one thing that really impressed me with the sprint was it's something to do with my settings probably, not the extruder, but there was basically no stringing going on. As you can see there's a little bit on the back window there, but that's pretty much about it. There wasn't anything else going on. So it's pretty much pointless to compare to the failed prints, but I'm just going to show you the difference with one of them. As you can see the failed print had more lines going on here and on this side as well. And the bottom f text part, well, it basically failed out, right? Just like the rest of the printers failed as well. So there was there is not much point in comparing these, but there is point in comparing these. These are from the old extruder, and uh, the one on the right is from before I did uh, uh, remove the springs from the heat pad. On the left is the one after I removed the springs from the heat pad, which looked better. So I'm going to compare using the better print from the old extruder so if you look at these side by side as you can see the old extruder had way more lining going on also I had to clean a lot of the stringing from the old print but still there I left some of them in just to show you it doesn't look that impressive the text on the bottom it printed fine but again it's not the best this didn't print best either because of this bit, but other than that, it looks way better. And yeah, there are some lines going on on the old print as well. So this is, I'm not going, I don't want to waste too much time. This is overall way better print than the last print. So yeah, I'm really impressed with the extruder so far and I'm sure it will get even better once I tinker with the settings a bit more, but even this is really good compared to what I had before. Let's look at the new control V torture test. So, as you can see, it printed really well. The tower is now here. The print quality is overall very good. There are obviously some problems with it, but not too many, and I'll just cover those in a bit. Also, to my, really surprising to me, there is basically no stringing going on at all. There is a little bit of roughness on thin pillars like this one, but yeah, nothing that I would complain about. So if we just compare this to the first print that I did with the extruder, well, there is basically no comparison. This is better in every aspect. Out. So as I showed you in the last video, this bit didn't print properly. I removed this in the last video if you remember. This test didn't print again on the old one, and here it looks perfect. These tin walls on the new print look decent. They're not the best I've seen, but they're pretty decent. They were basically non-existent on the old print. The sphere, etc. I'm not going to spend too much time covering these, but they look better as well. This pillar, at least properly printed on the new print, as if if you remember the last video, uh, I'll just show you again as well. This this is how much it printed on the last one compared to this. These curve bits were pretty bad on the old print as well. These printed better. And this sem semi sphere thing, well, it has some lines on it, which isn't perfect. It's still better than the lines on this one. Plus, it also doesn't have this thing going on as well. Also, let's compare with it with the old extruder. So, I have two prints from the old extruder. 
One is from before I did the spring spring swap on the glass pad, and one is after I did it. And the one after the I the one after looks better, so I'm just going to compare using that. So I don't want to waste too much time, so I'll just quickly show this one. As you can see, there are some zits going on. There aren't any zits on the new extruder. This bit didn't print as good as well. The overhang print was fine, but again, as you can see, the amount of stringing that's going on there. Surprisingly, these walls printed better with the old extruder, but other than that, everything is better on the new one. These thin walls, well, they all merged with one another on the old extruder. They are very well separated on the new one. I'm just going to gloss over these. This is the tall tower. It looks about the same on the old and new extruder, but old extruder had a bit more stringing going on, so I guess it's better on the new one. These slanted bits, well, I actually haven't looked at them. Yeah, the new extruder looks way better. And the semi-sphere I just covered in the second ago. There are some zits going on, but also what I meant, wanted to mention is Look at the amount of stringing going on there, so yeah. So far this new extruder looks way better. As I mentioned in the last video I was expecting that but I wasn't able to show it so unfortunately now I'm showing it. I'm also expecting to get this print quality even better once I'm done with tinkering with the settings but at this point I can safely say that this extruder was well worth the price that I paid for it. I've done some work on 3D modeling the control box design, as you can see. I haven't done much for the top part of the control box other than adding these fan mounts on both sides. So I'm just going to disable these for now. I've mostly done with the bottom part of the control box, so the layer one. So I'll just quickly talk about this. On this side, I'm going to have a 120 mm fan. And in this general area, I'm going to have the power supply. I'm not probably I'm not going to screw it in and mount it properly, but I'm going to use a friction style mount, which again I'm hoping it will be good enough. This fan grill is for the fan on the power supply, so I had to do some sort of a grill there, and this is the best design that I could come up with. Keep in mind that I'm not really experienced with fusion. Here, these two spots, I'm going to have uh, power switches, like the one and I use in the old control box. And this is the back side. I haven't, did, haven't worked on the uh, panel for the aviation style round connectors, but this is for the rest of the plugs. Here, I'm just going to have a little cutout for any miscellaneous cables. This is the let me just do this. This is the part where the power plug is going to go. Here I'm going to have a USB plug, so if, if I want to flash, say, the firmware or whatever, it will be easier to connect through here than connecting through somewhere else. And this cutout is for the um, Molex Minifit Junior style, or if you prefer the computer terms, the PCI Express 8 pin or style plug. I had to thin the walls here to 2 millimeters. The rest of the wall thickness is 3 millimeters. This is going to be used for the heat pad as I mentioned in the previous episode. So, yeah, this is all the work that I've done. Also, as you can see, there are some interconnects, various tiles for the top parts of the control box, but these aren't final, so yeah, just ignore those. And also, as I said, these aren't finalized either. As you can see, there's no door yet on this side. There's basically nothing on this side. The aviation style plugs will probably go here, mounted on a separate panel, and then just the panel will be screwed in to make life easier when it comes to mounting those. Um, yeah, this is all I'm able to show you so far. 
as you can see uh, I had five variations done so far so there is still a lot more to do, do and since I'm not really experienced with Fusion 360 this is the first thing that project that I have done here and I haven't used any other CAD software in the past it's taking me some time to actually do this so hopefully I will be able to show you more progress in the next video but I'm not promising that and I hope you liked this design and I hope you enjoyed this video as well if you did please leave me a like below and thanks for watching